Fast food workers in California can expect a change in their next paycheck. See how USC students celebrated their Arab heritage on campus today. I'm outside Dolby Theater right now where the iHeart Radio Music Awards are happening. Annenberg TV News is next. Many fast food workers in California now earn $20 an hour. Hi, I'm Vincent DeMonte. And I'm Sophie Sullivan. The Democrats passed the law last year to help those who rely on these jobs as their main source of income. The new higher wage is meant to provide financial security for over 500,000 workers across the state. Many of them are supporting adult, are so adult supporting families. Fast food workers say the increase will help cover the basics. My wage went up by like $4, so that increase helps a lot with uh, just paying for rent, school, and everything else that I need to live here. But I do think that it's necessary for people to um, receive fair wages for their work and their labor. There will be a better incentive for like the quality of food maybe to improve if, if people are being paid higher. Um, obviously they are kind of like forced to work with what they are given. Honestly, it's a sustainable job for a lot of people, a job that a lot of people need in order to get through their lives. So hopefully this increase can help them and make a world difference for them. Minimum wage here in California has increased steadily over the last 30 years. In 1994, workers received a minimum wage of 425. In 2004, the wage was 675. In 2014, it increased to $9 an hour. Before today's increase, the minimum wage was $16 an hour. The fast food industry has a turnover, employee turnover, 100, 150% per year. That means they're constantly hiring and have vacancies. And the increases in the minimum wage make it easier for them to recruit and retain their workforce and, and, uh, and, and, uh, and therefore have a more productive workforce. California is the first state in the country to have the minimum wage above $16. <laughs> Get ready to cough up more money for your dream home. A new study shows Americans need a six-figure income to afford property in 22 states. Findings by Bankrate shows that homeowners need to earn an average of $110,000 to afford an average home price of over $400,000. Students say they can't believe how much it costs to afford a house. Am I going to be able to afford living here? Because I've grown up here my whole life and I want to stay here but I'm not sure if I'll be able to do that. I'm not from California and I'm not from America, and so already like it's really difficult to live here. All things considered, like visa, um, housing, transportation, I don't have a car, like all of this stuff, like it's just like really like not feasible. The income needed to own a house in California has skyrocketed by almost 50% in the last four years. Buyers will need to make close to $200,000 to afford a home in the Golden State. The study cites a spike in mortgage rates as a primary reason why Americans need more money to own a house. A group of Poe Publica reporters won this year's Selden Ring Awards for their investigation of Supreme Court justices who had accepted luxury travel and gifts from wealthy businessmen. You don't want, you know, public officials having their lives subsidized and, and taking huge, lavish gifts and in some cases basically just money from people with ideological or material interests at whatever institution they're at. These reporters exposed Justice Clarence Thomas's dealings with a billionaire in a series of articles called Friends uh, of the Court. Uh, Anna Bergdine uh, Willow Bay and the Ring Foundation awarded the reporters for their investigative work. As a team, you know, what was new? What it feels incredible. It's a real honor. We're so happy with this award. We couldn't be happier. It's a you know real vote of confidence for the work we did. And then there is, you know, there, as you said, there is one rule that is, is binding and has an enforcement mechanism, which is that when they do accept gifts, uh, they have to disclose them to the public. Um, and that's a, that's a federal law that was passed after Watergate. Um, but um, enforcement for that is, uh, is very much an open question. I think we should be thinking about Supreme Court justices more in the way that we think about, say, members of Congress as uh, powerful political figures who can be subject to influence. And 
After their series ran last year, the Supreme Court introduced a code of conduct. The reporters said their greatest impact was on the court's shift towards more transparency. The aroma of locally made nafe and za'atar bread wafted through the air at Hans Plaza today, where many gathered for an Arab American Heritage Month celebration. USC kicked off the celebration with vibrant performances and festive music. Event goers said the event reminded them of their cultural roots. And it's just so beautiful because people think Arabs are just about, you know, food and dancing, but it's more than that. Our food represents our culture, which is hospitality and unity and love and, and joy and happiness and resilience. Oh my God, you should have seen when I told my dad that we were having this. He was so surprised. For him, when he first emigrated here, like there was nothing to support Arabs here in America. I was able to, you know, help other students on this campus and, like, you know, bring this event together. And so, for me, being able to bring that joy to my father and to my parents and to our, like, all our Arab community, that that means the world to me. The celebration is far from over, as there are more events to come all throughout the month, including an art exhibit, a community dinner, and a Hina event, a uh, Hina night. Well, it's April Fools, but we are not fooling you with this big USC basketball news. Let's go to Will for more. Yeah, thanks, Sophie. USC men's basketball head coach Andy Enfield is leaving Los Angeles for Dallas to become the head coach at SMU. Today's announcement comes 11 years to the day after Enfield's hiring with the Trojans. Enfield was sitting on a bit of a hot seat after a disappointing season for USC. On paper, the Trojans had one of the top backcourts in the nation, featuring Bronny James, number one recruit Isaiah Collier, and all Pac-12 first-teamer Boogie Ellis. But the Trojans finished the season just 15-18 record to miss out on the NCAA tournament. I think it's good. I, I uh, you know, I, I appreciate what he built for the program and everything, and he, you know, had success in past years and stuff. But I think it's, it's time for a new face, and honestly, I mean... <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> I think we could have went a lot farther if we had a better coach. Like, I feel like we have a lot of great talent. USC Athletic Director Jennifer Cohen in a statement thanked Enfield for his decade-long leadership of the men's team, which included a run to the Elite Eight in 2021. Cohen added the search for the Trojans' next head coach is underway. Just ahead, we'll go live to Hollywood for a preview of the iHeartRadio Awards. Find out what to do when it comes to reading the news and finding the truth. And we'll see how all the rain this winter and spring have shut down a local landmark. We'll be right back. Let me tell you how we amplify our Latine voices. Check out Dimelo. We have it all. Deportes. Entertainment. Noticias. ¿Qué tal? Soy Mariela Gomez y bienvenidos a Dimelo Ahora. Radio and Podcasting. Comida y Cultura. Digital Social Media. ¿A qué equipo le vas tú? LA Galaxy or LAFC? Dimelo is the only Latine focused media outlet at USC. Dimelo, we have it all. Dimelo, we, we have, have it all. Mr. Owl, how many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll center of a Tootsie Pop? Let's find out. One, two, three. How many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? The world may never know. There's a new pet. Ch -ch -ch Chia. Chia pet. The pottery that grows. It's fun and easy. Soak your chia, spread the seeds, keep it watered, and watch it grow. And now grow a whole collection of fun with Chia teddy bears. Puppies, kittens, rams, bulls. There's even a Chia tree to keep your pets company. Chia Pets and Trees, the pottery that grows. The Chia Pet and Chia Tree are available at Kmart, Rite Aid, Ames, and Woolworth. Makes a great gift. This afternoon, USC students got exclusive access to walk around the LA Memorial Coliseum with none other than rapper Megan Thee Stallion. 
Attendees got free shoes and performances by the USC Marching Band and Son Girls. We spoke to students before the event about what this fitness fun means to them. We are waiting for the hottie walk. The hottie walk. Woo it feels unreal. Like, it's just, we were talking about this, but this is something that, just a random day in LA where you get to meet Megan Thee Stallion while walking. So, yeah. yeah. Could be April Fools, could but be, be, we're be, hoping no, yeah. that it's not. Yeah. Yeah. Attendees say that coming off of Women's History Month, the event empowers women to get outside and get active. Now we will cut to Ethan Huang live at the iHeart Music Awards, just steps away from Beyonce. Thanks, Sophie. I'm here. Thanks, Sophie. I'm here on the Hollywood Walk of Fame outside Dolby Theater, where this year's iHeart Radio Music Awards are happening right now. You wouldn't know it now, but it was lively earlier. Jared Leto and Ice Spice were some of the people we caught passing through, but the show already started about an hour ago to kick off their 11th annual ceremony. The show features nominations from names like Taylor Swift, Paramore, Jungkook, and SZA, but the biggest honors of the nights will be for Beyonce and Cher, who will be receiving the iHeart Innovator Award and iHeart Icon Award, respectively. This year's newest additions include a Pop Artist and Pop Song of the Year Award. If you want to check out the show for yourself, it's live right now until 7 o'clock tonight. You can catch it on Fox or on iHeartRadio. For Annenberg Media, I'm Ethan Huang. Back to you in the studio. Well, welcome back to Sports Scene. I'm Sophie Sullivan. Just kidding. It's not really a sports scene. You just got fooled. But I am really Sophie Sullivan. And today we're going beyond the headline to take a deeper look into April's Fool's Day. This year's gags include real-life Mario Kart with the Nintendo Switch Vision Pro, a hot dog flavored sparkling water at your local 7-Eleven, and a new way to wear your mop. Without a second look, would any of these fool you? Whenever you're, you come across information online or somewhere else that is surprising or that uh, makes you feel a strong emotion, that's usually a good sign that you need to stop, slow down, consider the source, and ask yourself, is this really true? Take a second to do a quick search to find whether other credible sources are reporting the same information that you're seeing. The first step is to take a step back. Ask yourself, who's sharing this? Who's being quoted? Make sure to read beyond the headline to understand the story entirely. And don't forget to check the date that it was published. If it was years ago, it may no longer be accurate. If it was published today, it may not be accurate at all. After witnessing hundreds of wedding ceremonies, the historic Wayfarers Chapel in Rancho Palace Murders has to say goodbye to all of the sweet moments. We do not have a time frame for reopening the chapel. We expect that we'll be shut down at least for two years. Landslides have caused the chapel to suffer from cracking and sinking. Still, the biggest problem is that no one can control landslides. I'm here in the chapel's garden and you can see here it's raining heavily, but it looks like nothing is damaged, right? But you can look down here, there is never a gap between the corridor and the bricks and also the roof is leaking and the roof is twisted into a very weird shape. The Wayfarers Chapel is like a secret garden for the entire community. The wedding ceremony was held at the end of January 2020, just before the COVID-19 outbreak. In fact, this was the last time that our whole family was together. I have a daughter right now. She's young. I wish to bring her there when she grows up and show her that daddy and mommy got married here. And you're in an area surrounded by redwoods and you have the ocean to uh, the back of you as you are in the chapel facing the altar area. Its name, Wayfarers, is meant to be for those who are wayfaring through life. It's for anyone, it's for everyone. The rings have closed the chapel for now, but they cannot wash away nearly 75 years of wonderful memories. For Annenberg Media, I'm Kathy Yun. Well, that was a great report by Kathy. Got to say, you know, a lot of memories there, but and that rain continues to mess things up. So, Avi, you know, uh, California can't seem to pick a lane, whether it's raining all the time or sunshine and rainbows. Like, it really can't seem to pick a lane. So, how about you tell us, uh, how's it looking today? Also, got to mention, you are looking a little transparent today. So, tell us how that is. Ha ha, Vincent. Good afternoon, Los Angeles. Happy April 1st. The crew decided it would be funny to tell me we were all wearing green today. 
Lucky them, I forgot my job has me standing in front of the green screen. Hope you all had a nice weekend. Let's take a quick look at today's current conditions. It's been a nice sunny day here in LA, uh, good 66 degrees, and let's see if that holds up for the rest of the week. We will see some April showers on Friday, but despite that, it looks like this week's weather is going to be beautiful, and we'll even see a high of 76 on Wednesday. Looks like April is bringing in the good, and let's hope that continues throughout the month. Nolan, what do you have for us in sports? Yeah, thanks, Avi. Next up on ATVN Sports, Will and I discuss our final four brackets. Now, find out who has all chalk and who has a Cinderella going to the finals. And the USC versus UConn women's basketball game is about to tip off. Stay tuned for our predictions. And who will replace Andy Enfield as the head coach of USC men's basketball? Your guess is as good as ours. All that and more up next on ATVN Sports. Yes, that's French they're speaking. And no, these children aren't French. They're American. And they've acquired their amazing new language skills from Muzzy, the remarkable new video language program for children developed by the British Broadcasting Corporation. With this unique BBC language course, children learn a second language with incredible ease. Four delightful videos quickly become their favorite TV show and teaches children the same way they learned English. Learning another language becomes fun. You'll be amazed when your children begin speaking and understanding their new language from the very first day through this unique method. The entire course, four videos, two audio cassettes, the activity book, and the parents' guide and answer book is available in French, Spanish, Italian, or German. To order, use your credit card and call this number. We'll ship and charge you $2,808 a month for six months. Your satisfaction is guaranteed. Call 1-800-424-0700. Okay, this stuff is really amazing. I mean, I put it in my mouth and I taste what, watermelon, but it's not just that. I taste strawberry too, but it's kind of like a watermelony strawberry put together. Hey, oh, oh, hang on. Sorry about that. And the bubbles are really awesome. I mean, that's why they call it Max, I guess, obviously. I, that sort of makes sense once you think about it. Oh, I'm Dan, and uh, that's Chuck. Hubba Bubba Max. A whole new kind of bubble. Hey! Welcome back to ATVN Sports. I'm Nolan Ezzett. And I'm Will Simons. It might be April now, but there's a few teams still dancing, including USC women's hoops. Yeah, speaking of, who do you have taken to your Final Four? Look, Sophie, look, sorry, Nolan. It, you know, this might be a little bit controversial, but... You know, it I'm is controversial. Hey, 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 why are you guys out of here? Come on. <laughs> What are those guys thinking, after all? I mean, anyways, the real crew is here. We're all looking forward to tonight's game, but first let's quickly recap Saturday's win over Baylor in the Sweet 16. USC narrowly pulled out a 74-70 win as Juju Watkins once again led the way with a game-high 30 points. After USC built a 10-point lead in the first half, Baylor battled back behind strong three-point shooting. The Trojans found themselves trailing late, but this transition and one by Juju Watkins gave the Trojans a lead for good to seal a gritty win and dance another day. USC's Elite Eight matchup against three-seed UConn tips off in about 20 or 30 minutes. The game will be played at Moda Center in Portland. Now, Juju Watkins will face her toughest tournament competition yet, going blow for blow against UConn's Paige Beckers. Now, Watkins is an excellent physical player who draws fouls and grabs boards everywhere. Beckers, on the other hand, is a much more efficient scorer who is incredible from three-point range. Now, look, Will, how do you see the Trojans' path kind of, you know, turning out, starting with this UConn game? What are your predictions? Yeah, we'll get to sort of the path ahead in a little bit later, but I think tonight I... I, you have to feel strong about the Trojans' chances because they've played well against other top teams and they've played a lot given their rigorous Pac-12 schedule. They beat Stanford twice. They beat UCLA twice. They beat Oregon State twice. Those are three really good teams that all made the Sweet 16. So I feel good about the Trojans' ability to sort of rise up to the occasion tonight. What's going to be that key? I'm, uh, this is kind of the key that I, I always keep coming back to, but it's Rhea Marshall. Mm. And it's a stat that I've been using all season. Whenever Rhea Marshall scores double-digit points, USC has not lost this season. That feels like a pretty good formula to me. 
That's impressive. The one thing that scares me about this whole storyline of Juju versus Beckers, yeah. you know, Juju, as great of a player as she is, first of all, Beckers has way more experience. Yep. The other thing, Beckers is shooting about 54% from the field on the season. Watkins at numbers about 40%. What I'm going to need to see from Juju, not only is another 27, 20, even 30 point game, I'm going to need to shoot. I'm going to need to see something like 45, maybe 50% from the field or defensively from the Trojans holding Beck Beckers to that. 40% or even sub 40% shooting number. Yeah, because I think that's the interesting part about this game because everybody's tuning in because it's Juju versus Paige Backers. That's the headliner, but I think USC has an advantage when you look at the rest of these teams because of their depth. UConn really only plays six players because they've had some injury issues this season, whereas USC has eight, maybe even nine players that might see the floor tonight. And I think those couple of bench players, whether it's Clarice Akunwafo or Kayla Williams, could make a difference coming into this game and maybe changing the tempo. We'll definitely need to see that. I think Padilla is also a player yep. that we're going to need to see great efficient numbers from her. She's been pretty efficient this far in the tournament, but she hasn't gotten as many shots as I would have liked to see her get off for sure. Yep, but we're not far away, so... We're definitely not far away. Um, on the men's side, we're actually uh, gearing up to set the final four matchup, which will be played on Friday. Uh, South Carolina and NC State secured their spot with an Elite Eight win yesterday. One seeded South Carolina took care of business in a 70 to 58 win against Oregon State. But it wasn't all chalk as three seeded NC State upset number one seeded Texas 76 to 66. The Gamecocks and Wolfpack will face off in the final four. Iowa and LSU are playing their Elite Eight matchup in Albany, New York right now. This is a rematch of last year's championship game, which LSU did win. Currently, this matchup has Iowa, the Iowa Hawkeyes winning 69-58 to currently over the LSU Tigers with about 35 seconds left in the third quarter. Caitlin Clark is absolutely balling out, who would have thought, for the Iowa Hawkeyes with 31 points and 7 assists. Angel Reese also having a solid performance herself, 16 points and 12 rebounds. Still quite a bit of time to go, though, so it is still quite a game. Now, look, I'm not sure what's going to happen. It's about a 10, 11 point game. But I think one person that might know what's going to happen is our women's hoop expert. Let's go check out Will's picks at the monitor. Yeah, so right here on the monitor, I've got my picks for the rest of the way, how I think it's going to go. And my pregame pick for Iowa LSU is looking pretty good so far. I had LSU, uh, Iowa taking down LSU to move on to the Final Four. And later tonight, I think USC does pull it out against UConn, which would set up such a fun matchup. Juju Watkins. Caitlin Clark, I think the two best players in women's college basketball, if not college basketball, period, this season, um, facing off. But I think the freshman gets it done. I think USC gets to the national championship game in year one with Juju Watkins. On the other side, though, I think this is really easy. South Carolina over NC State. I, I, to put it simply, I don't know how you beat South Carolina. So much talent, so much depth, and I think they win it all. I've been saying it for most of the season. I've definitely been saying it all month. South Carolina in the battle of the USC's. I've got South Carolina winning it all going uh, f uh, undefeated season. I just don't see how you stop them. Anyways, Nolan, back to you. Yeah, so on the men's side, all four Elite Eight games were played last weekend. The favorite actually won in the first three games, but in the last one, 11 seeded NC State continued their amazing Cinderella run with a victory over four seeded Duke. Uh, I'll say like I've been saying the whole tournament, when I stop having fun with basketball, I'll stop playing. Um, I'm very thankful to be here. My guys behind us are ready. Yeah, and you better believe my new favorite player, DJ Burns, he was definitely having fun yesterday as he led NC State over Duke. The Wolfpack will now take on Purdue in the Final Four. On Saturday, UConn's 30-0 run silenced Illinois. Those dogs will face Alabama in the other national semifinal matchup in Phoenix. Now, I already gave my picks on the women's side, but Nolan, we've switched spots at the monitor, so let's hear your final four picks on the men's side. Yeah, thanks, Will. My bracket that I made at the beginning of the tournament is definitely busted as of now, but one that might not be is my little final four bracket right here. Only three games, so how hard can it really be? Now, look, first up, I've got this UConn-Alabama matchup. I've got UConn winning that one. UConn is the hottest team in college basketball right now, and it's going to stay that way with the win over Alabama, I think. They put on a show with a 30-0 to run in the Elite Eight. Don't be surprised if they do it again. But on this other side, NC State versus Purdue, I've got an upset alert. Number 11, NC State is going to continue their Cinderella story. They are on a fiery 10-game winning streak right now. 
The Boilermakers, on the other hand, they just never show up against high seeds. Now look, we get to this championship matchup, number one UConn and number 11 NC State. I really want the Wolfpack to make history, but it's not going to happen. UConn is unstoppable. They are untouchable. The Huskies are back-to-back -back champions. Book it. Now, as we discussed earlier, USC men's basketball is now in need of a head coach after Andy Enfield left. And it's an already tumultuous time for the program as it moves to the Big Ten next season. So, Nolan, you're back at the desk with me. What do you think about USC's, just the state of this program right now? Yeah, I mean, it's tough. I mean, first of all, I'm, I kind of am, you know, sad for the Trojans' sake to, you know, to not see Enfield here anymore. I think Enfield was a good coach, and I think he got, got a lot of hate. It's about that time, though, we have to start looking at new alternatives, you know, new coaches, who's going to replace Andy Enfield, because I, I think he did a great job kind of building up this program. And honestly, I look at Crosstown Rival. Why not do the same thing that the football team did? Go get someone from UCLA. I think Mick Cronin's a really good coach. I think, you know, say what you want about his performance this year, just like Andy Enfield. Not great performance this year, but in previous years, Cronin's been really good. Yeah, I, I just don't think it'll be a particularly splashy hire, to be perfectly honest, but um, it'll be interesting to see what USC does. Obviously, you know, not a great season, but we'll see what happens. Anyways, that's all we have time for on ATVN Sports. Let's kick it back to Sophie. This week's Trojan Spotlight shows you what, what one talented Trojan can make on film. Issa Johnson with more. Let me tell you how we amplify our Latine voices. Check out Dimelo. We have it all. Deportes. Entertainment. Noticias. ¿Qué tal? Soy Mariela Gomez y bienvenidos a Dimelo Ahora. Radio and Podcasting. Comida y Cultura. Digital Social Media. ¿A qué equipo le vas tú? LA Galaxy or LAFC? Dimelo is the only Latine focused media outlet at USC. Dimelo, we have it all. Dimelo, we, we have, have it all. all. Want quality name brand carpet for less? Call Empire and you can get quality carpet at the lowest price guaranteed. And no payments for one year. 800 2300 Empire. Today. I've replaced your shoelaces with fruit by the foot. So you did. I replaced your fingers with fruit by the foot. Bravo. I replaced your bones with fruit by the foot. Indeed you have. I replaced your guitar strings with fruit by the foot. <laughs> Seems like a step backwards, but all right. I've replaced your DNA with fruit by the foot. That would be in the game, my friend. Fruit by the foot. Fruit flavored snack. Time now for the Trojan Student Spotlight. Eli Stubb grew up making short films on iMovie with his sister. Now, this cinema student's junior thesis has been nominated for the National Film Festival for Talented Youth. While in high school, Eli emailed a USC professor, professor asking to audit a production class. That was the beginning of his journey into the School of Cinematic Arts community. They, this class is like, they, they don't really do it all the time anymore, but they make a feature film on the Warner Bros. lot. And so I spent my spring break of my junior year in high school on set on Warner Bros. Um, with this professor and with these MFA students. Eli says in the future he hopes to become a writer, director, and sound designer for all his films. He has been able to take classes at USC that foster his interest in sound, and he's even met with Gary Rydstrom, the sound designer for Jurassic Park. You basically create sounds for things that don't exist. So uh, we learned how to create the sound of King Kong, uh, like his roar, but also like his feet up against the ground, and when his hand touches his fur, and what that would all sound like. Um, and it was taught by Stephen Flick, who did the sound for Die Hard. His film Gumball Machine was screened at the Dean's Luncheon in front of some of the biggest alumni in the movie industry. This summer, he plans on screening his latest film, Moderator, at the IMAX Theater on campus. That's all for today. <laughs>
Well, thanks for watching Annenberg TV News. From everyone here at Annenberg Media, I'm Vincent DeMonte. And I'm Sophie Sullivan. For more coverage, watch and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Annenberg Media. Thank you and good night.